everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Ashley and in today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about what I include in my newsletters. So every single month, I make a newsletter for my parents. I try to get it out to them by the first of the month and it has like information about the rest of the month, if there's anything going on, if I'm gonna close for any reason or if I have to just tell them something, I include it in the newsletter. So I have all of my newsletters right here. This is actually July, so I just posted this one. I think it was yesterday. No, the night before the first, so the 30th at midnight. Not midnight, like around 10 or 11. I was just up, I was making it already, so I just decided to post it when I was finished. And that is this one right here. So I'm just going to be showing you guys what I include in the newsletter. I didn't know what to include in my newsletter when I was first starting out. I know it's common sense now. But before I was like, oh my God, nothing's really going on. What am I supposed to include there? But I'm gonna show you guys what I include and then you guys can kind of get a better idea of what to include in yours. So I'm gonna include my newsletters in this picture. And we're gonna start off with July's. So for my newsletters, I always put birthdays, closing, and important dates. So I do have a birthday this month, I do have a day that I am closed this month, and I do have an important date. I like to include these all on the newsletter because some parents forget. I give them a full list of the days that I close for the entire year, but sometimes people think, oh, she was just closed, she's not gonna be closed for a long time, and then boom, I'm closed. For example, last week I was on vacation, and this week I have a day that I am closed. Get what I'm saying? So I like to make sure that I include them in the newsletter. So I always keep that little section towards the top of the page and then I keep my curriculum. So July is a five week month for me. I'm making it a five week month and I have the curriculum for each week. So I always pick a letter, number, color and shape of the week. And sometimes I do it for the month. It just really depends on like how quickly I wanna move through things or if it's a busy month, if it's a slow month, like what's going on. It depends on how I set up the curriculum. So for example, this month, we don't have anything crazy going on. It's just the 4th of July. It's not like Christmas or Thanksgiving where I gotta buy gifts and I gotta make sure that everybody has this or that or that or this. So I keep it a little bit more complex when it comes to the curriculum. If you look at my, I'm gonna include it in the screen. If you look at my, was it March? Yeah, if you look at my March curriculum, I had a bunch of letters for the entire month. The letters were A, B, and C. The ASL was Rainbow Banana. The numbers, we didn't have a specific number we were focusing on. We just reviewed, counted to 10 or to 15. Then we had colors, review all colors, and then the shape was the star. So I didn't have one for every single week. It was the entire month we had to review those things. So every month I do it different, obviously. I also kind of get bored myself. I don't wanna do the same thing every single month, so I switch it out. So I always have my curriculum on there. So if the parents have this letter and they know that we are on week three, they're gonna be like, okay, the letter's Q. So you know at home, if you see the letter Q, or if they wanna practice with their children, they know what to practice because that's what we're doing in class, if that makes sense. So I love to include those in my newsletter. Then, news. If there's anything specific that I wanna reiterate, if there's anything specific that I wanna make sure that the parents remember, I'll include it on the newsletter. So it's been raining a lot this month. And for this past month, in the month of June, it's been raining a ton and my front door area gets really slippery. So I just decided to put the little kids slipping. I just Googled it, it's a clip art. And then I just wrote that the tiles upon entering my entryway and near the front door get extremely slippery when wet. Please always be cautious when walking and encourage your children to not run and make sure they stay safe. Oh, and make sure we all stay safe, I'm sorry. So I like to include little things like that. At one point I had some parents leaving the gate open for outside open, like wide open, they didn't lock it and it would just blow open. My little kids would get curious and look and I don't want people seeing my kids, like neighbors or random people if they're walking by and it's just not safe in general. So I had to put that in my newsletter. I believe that was in April's newsletter. Let me double check. Yeah, so in April's newsletter, you'll see it. I have the little gate and then I just made sure that I told them that, hey guys, you guys gotta close the gate. So every single month, I just include things like that. Um, for the month of October, this was the first newsletter that I did. I did newsletters when I first started daycare and then I stopped doing them altogether. I just kind of felt a little bit sad because I would make newsletters. I would print them out and give them to the parents and then I would find them in my driveway or I would find them in the trash can like they didn't want to use them. So I was just like, you know what? These people, they don't appreciate it. I'm not going to make any more newsletters. But then it got to the point where it's like, I have so much information that I want to tell you guys. I'm just going to make newsletters again. And that's why I started. So October, I mentioned that. I mentioned that I bought newsletters back. 
I also mentioned that we had a Facebook group to make sure that you guys are added in there because all of the newsletters and important stuff is going to be posted there. Um, I also had birthdays. I also had my curriculum. And then that month we were having a Halloween party. So I decided to let them know, hey, bring your kids in a Halloween-ish shirt. No costume because it gets hard to take off each costume and put each costume on each kid, if that makes sense. So just little things like that. And then whenever I'm close for vacation or whatever, I make sure that I talk to them about it. In November's newsletter, I needed to make sure that I told the parents about toys because I started to see a lot of kids coming into the daycare with toys. And in my handbook, it says that you just can't have toys. I wanted to just make sure that I spoke to them about it and made it like super clear, like no more toys. I included a little picture of a toy bin to so make it a little bit more cute. And then also it was getting colder in that time and I saw a lot of kids coming with short sleeve shirts and no sweaters. And then when we would go outside, it was super cold. I have some backup sweaters, about like eight or nine backup sweaters in the hallway closet so I use those but I just want to make sure that every kid has their own sweater and those are just backups for like super emergencies or whatever and then I included a picture of a sweater so in your newsletter you're just going to want to make sure that you include days that you are closed you're going to want to make sure that you include holidays I like to talk about the kids' birthdays I have some of my parents' birthdays written down I think I'm going to start including the parents' birthday like hey it's Jackie's mom's birthday everybody wish her a happy birthday and then everybody there can just wish her a happy birthday or something like that just to make sure that, that everybody is communicating because i feel like it's important you just want to make sure that you include like i said any important dates so that's birthdays days that you're closed holidays anything in general if you guys want to mention even if it's earth day if it's um something specific that you wanted to mention just mention it any important news if you don't have any important news or any important policies that you want to make sure that the parents are doing Randomly pick a policy from your handbook and include it in there. It's really good to refresh people's memories. Sometimes I'll read over my handbook and I'm like, oh my God, I forgot that I had that in there. Sometimes I forget what's in my own handbook and these parents that they probably only read it one time when you first give it to them, they're probably gonna forget too. So I think that keeping a policy or two in there is really good. And just news, like I said, if it's cold, make sure that you remind them to bring sweaters. If you need any supplies, make sure you include it in there. If you guys are gonna have any parties, include them in there. February, it was obviously tax season I included my EIN inside of my newsletter to make sure that everybody had it for when they were going to do their taxes and if I ever have any spaces in my daycare open I put it in there so that they can let everybody know just little things like that it is important I also included a policy in the month of March to make sure that everybody was taking off their shoes I make sure that everybody takes off their shoes, kids and adults, if they're gonna enter my home. The kids already know when they get dropped off, they take off their shoes, they put them by the door, but I did start to see some parents walking into the house with shoes, some kids coming in with shoes. Also, there are kids that were getting picked up by grandparents and the grandparents didn't know the policy and they would walk in with shoes. So I told the parents, hey, remind anybody that's gonna pick up your kids to take off their shoes as well. Just making sure that you're staying in communication with your parents. So anything you feel is necessary to mention in your newsletter, I think that you should include them. I'm gonna include a slideshow towards the end of the video with every single one of my newsletters. If you guys wanna pause it and read it so you guys can kind of get an idea of what to include in your newsletter and how to word it. I'll have it there so that basically completes it i hope it helped you guys somewhat i do have a really cute newsletter planned for the month of august i'm going to record myself doing it so you guys can see it and see exactly how i do it i don't have any fancy programs i have my mac i use pages i insert clip arts i make them png files and i like set them up so i'm going to be doing a video on that and if you guys are interested then um just stay tuned so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in my next video.